mm-hmm. in the end. And and this is what our spirit friends often try to do to us in an attempt to help us with discovering more truth, but also in an attempt to release us from the spirit influence we're under while we're in our addiction. Mm-hmm. And I feel you've been in quite heavy spirit influence at times because you were willing to completely abdicate your own will mm-hmm. in this process. And when you're willing to completely abdicate your own will, give it away, mm. then you leave yourself completely open to being influenced by much darker influences. Mm. And the brighter spirits will not influence you when you abdicate your own will. The brighter spirits do not then take control of your life because they want you to have your own will. Mm -hmm. One of the whole reasons why you're here on the planet is to embrace your own will, to learn Mm -hmm. how to embrace your free will. So every time you abdicate your will, and I see a lot of people who are in new age sort of circles abdicating their own will very frequently, giving giving themselves away. Almost. Becoming fascinated with this idea of a guide and guidance mm. and signs and and then before they know it, th- their life is just totally run by those things mm-hmm. instead of first connecting with desire and letting that lead mm-hmm. and then being guided. Because remember, your desires, if they're harmonious with love, they are very different than if they're harmonious with addiction. Mm-hmm. Right? So, So whenever we follow a desire that ends up being an addiction we will often abdicate our own control of ourselves even and we will allow other influences to come and push us in certain directions yeah. that if we had our own will, we would never agree to. Mm. Yep. And we, we know of a man in Australia who, when I first met him, he would abdicate his own will every single morning. He'd get up and he'd say to what he called the universe, what do you want me to do today? Yeah. And whatever messages he got, he did that day. Oh, that's me. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm very, let my will be aligned with that. Yeah. I can definitely yeah. put my hand up to that. And, yeah. and what that does is open you completely mm. to more malevolent spirits guiding your will. Because uh, a divine love guide or a guide who's in a lo- condition of love, any guide who's in a condition of love, will not want you to abdicate your own will. Mm. They want you to learn how to use your will in harmony, in harmony yeah. with love. Yeah. It's interesting because it's a sort of more for me almost like I've got a boat with a sail and I want, I'm, I'm wanting and to get aligned, the wind blows you. aligned with that, aligned with the wind, but I'm in current control of the sails. It's interesting to, to stir that up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. And when you are fully embracing your free will, Mm -hmm. you are not very open at all to spirits telling you what to do or abdicating your will to spirits. You will be guided by, when you're guided by your guides or your guardians, what happens is that they give you, they, all of their messages they give you are completely harmonious with your passions and desires. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to abdicate your passions and desires and do what they want because to do that would mean that you're only becoming a puppet Mm. of another person rather than knowing yourself. Mm. And this is the problem we see in most New Age spirituality. There is this desire to abdicate the will, Mm. give it up. Even in favour of God's will. Yeah. When the truth is God's will is that you have your will. Have your will. That's (laughs) That's why he gave you it. Yeah. yeah, so God will never tell you what to do. God will say, what is your desire? Is it loving? Go for it, you know. The, and if it's not loving, I'll correct it. Yeah, Through I'll let you know. Laws, I'll correct yeah. it. Yeah, so. so. So one of the things to look at quite strongly for yourself in your life is is to to begin to get back this desire to understand your own desires. What do you want to do? Rather than sort of being blown about here and there, by the forces of nature, let's call it, but it's really spirit forces, rather than being blown about, allow yourself to connect with what do you desire to do? What are your real passions and desires? Because I actually feel Alicia's really not yet fully discovered them, Mm. right? Because you've abdicated your will for such a long time. It's been very difficult oh, yeah. for you to I've know I've had conversations this week about that, so perfect. Sorry, awesome. I feel like I've hogged the, hogged no, no, the this time is a little. This is good. <laughs> yeah. so, so do you understand the issue? So do not... I think it's good for us to see what's going on here because, because there, 
whenever we have a tendency to talk about guys and guardians, there is this tendency that people have that they think they know what we're speaking about yeah. and that they think that it's happened in their life when in reality they haven't been guided by their guide or guardian. They've actually been guided by very negative influences mm. who want them to abdicate their will. Mm. Mm. And that is not the same as what your guides and guardians are attempting to do with you. Your guide and guardian do not want you to abdicate your will. They want you to embrace your will. And when you embrace your will with passion, they will be able to help you have that will satisfied if it's harmonious with love. Mm. And if it's not harmonious with love, they will help you through the same process see, oh, it's not harmonious with love here. And I can address that. And so it's always going to be something that's building on itself. So you're always going to be growing in knowledge that complements the previous knowledge you had and you're, you're growing towards more and more truth. It won't be like, oh, I landed here, that must be because I should have had some experience. I don't really understand it. Oh, I'll go to the next place. Oh, I just had another experience. And, and I know a lot of New Age is sort of typified by that um, thing of we can't understand and it's just good and it must have been for some sole purpose that we, you know, a lot of language that <coughs> doesn't really resolve anything, any meaning in our life. Mm. Whereas um, Your guides want to have resolution of every issue. Yeah. yeah. They want you to know why you went to a certain place. They want you to get think, yeah, and that's <coughs> taught me this about this, you know, and mm. or God or the way the the way I am or, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Your guides are not mysterious. Mm. They are very down to earth, practical people. They they want to show you exactly what's going on every single time. It's, it's the spirits who are in darkness or darker places who love mystery. They want you to abdicate your will and to give it up to mystery. And God is totally desirous of you knowing all truth. Darker spirits want you to know no truth. Mm. They want you to just abdicate your will to mystery so that they can then manipulate you in any the direction they want you to go. That's their underlying purpose. So, so every time we abdicate ourselves, abdicate our desires and our will, we are giving ourselves over, unfortunately. Now, our guides will still try to work with that, which your guides have done. But, but we, they, who knows, that if, if you didn't abdicate your will right at the beginning with your grandma... <laughs> and you might have gone down a different track, which mm. meant discovery of truth sooner. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, um, it, you don't really know because once you abdicate your will, then you're really under where the wind blows you. Even though you feel like you're following your own will and you feel like it's building, because that makes sense mm -hmm. to me as well. I can mm. see that building, yes, go there, and that builds on that and that builds on that, even though you can see all of that. Yep. And that's the truth, except there's also influences at the same there's time. There's also the negative influence at the same yeah. time. So your guides are working on you with regard to the truthful influences to bring you to a place, mm. which they have done quite well, considering all the negative influences yeah. that have been there, plus your own abdication of your will. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and, and this is where it's, we have to appreciate our guides because yeah. it just demonstrates that, that even if we take a direction that's quite like giving up will and all sorts of other things... In the end, they pull us around to finish mm -hmm. up seeing truth anyway. And this is um, the beauty of our guides, and we have to have a lot of appreciation for their effort because uh, without their effort, none of those things mm -hmm. would have probably occurred. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Is there any questions about what no, I just... <coughs> Thank you. Pleasure. Can everyone see the importance of not giving up your will? Can everyone see that? I think it's an important distinction between being guided and giving up your will, isn't it? Certainly. A lot of people feel that when you're guided, you're just going to be given a checklist. Oh, when I have a good relationship with my guides, they'll just tell me. Go here, go there, go there, go there, and it's not how it's, it's not going to work. how it's going to work at all. Yep. When you, yeah. And if it is working that way, I'd be very suspicious <laughs> of who it is that's influencing me to think that way. Because the, the reality is that God placed us on this earth for, for a couple of purposes. The first primary purpose is so that we would come to experience her love. The second primary purpose so that, is that, so that we'd come to experience ourselves as God intended us to be in terms of our full-blown creation. 
the creation of ourselves. Now, now, if you abdicate your will, you will never get the second one, ever. You will never come to know yourself. You are only going to know what everybody else wants. You're never going to come to know yourself if you abdicate your own will. So it's very important to understand that your free will is one of these primary gifts that God has given you to utilise how you wish. But don't give it up. Don't give it away to other people. Embrace it for yourself. Yeah, Nico, just hang a sec with the mic. About free will, it's the gift of God to humanity in order to... It's the gift of God to me so I can find who I am. It's not only so you can find who you are, but it's also so you can begin to understand love. Without free will, love cannot exist. You see, love comes as an emotion from the heart, from the heart of an individual given to another individual. Without free will, there is no possibility of love existing. Because if free will doesn't exist, there is no desire in me. I, won't, I wouldn't have a self-actualised desire to love you. Do you understand? Yeah. It's very important to understand this relationship between free will and love. Love cannot exist without the gift of free will. No, I get it. Yes? So, so every time you give up your free will, you yeah, are also yeah. giving up love. You are giving up the potential of you loving another and another loving you for being you. You see? So, so if I now give all of my will over to Mary, and whatever Mary says I do, then who can you love? When you love me, you're not loving me. You're loving Mary. Because I'm the one, I've abdicated my will to Mary. You're now loving Mary. You're not really loving me. If you, even if you think you love me, you're only getting what has been modified by Mary. Uh, even if I say I love you, I'm not loving you. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving my demands getting met. And she's loving herself, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not me. So, so, so the issue is love cannot exist between us if I give up my will for Mary or Mary gives up her will for me. Love can only exist if I own my will and a part of that desire inside of me is that I want to love Mary, I will love Mary. And then my will is being exercised to love Mary. Mary will then feel it as my feelings for her rather than feeling it that I'm doing something for her. She will feel it as my feelings for her. Can you see the dif dis distinction? And this is something that we need to understand with free will. Every time we give up free will, we, we take away from ourselves the ability to love. Every single time. And this is when people often ask us, well, what about God's will for us? The same applies. If you give up your will to do what you believe is God's will, then you're no longer, God can no longer love you. Because, because you've given up your will. You've given up your sense of yourself. God can only then love what she has created in you um, rather than loving you. When you own your own will, now God can love you because you are an individual. You are someone who can receive God's love when, when you are in the action of feeling your own will. And this is, uh, I feel, a big issue for many religions. Many religions encourage you to give up your own will. Right? It makes me laugh when people say to me that I'm creating a cult. Because if I'm creating a cult, I'm creating a cult that has a, every single person in it has their own will. <laughs> now, to me, that can't be a cult anymore because every single person is going to do what they will, not what I will, for them. Does that make sense? And this is very important. God created you to engage your will. God also created you to experience love. And if you engage your will in a loving manner, now you can experience many beautiful things. And if you engage your will to love God and receive God's love, now you can experience even more beautiful things. But it has to be with your will. And this is where I feel many spirits muddy the waters. They actually try to get you to think that giving up your will is following God. And that is not true. God would not give you the gift of free will only to take it away again in order to worship God. Can you see? Why would God do that? 
God gave you the gift of free will so that through your own choice you could decide to worship God if that's what you want to do. And God also gave you the free will that you could decide not to worship God if that's what you wanted to do. And both are available to you if you exercise your will. Yep. And this is where I feel it's very important to understand that with regard to spirits. Every time you activate, deactivate your own will, you place yourself in danger of being manipulated by another person. Whether that person is on earth or in the spirit world, doesn't matter. You are placing yourself in their hands. You don't need to do that. And you definitely don't do that on the divine love path. So it's like the analogy we gave of the crossroad earlier. And if you're standing at the crossroad and you go, God, which way is it? Which, what's your will for me to go? God's not going to answer, but some spirit likely is. And go, go left, you know, go right, whatever. <laughs> Whereas if you actively engage your desire and your action, which was one of the points that your guides all said to you, you, you take a step for yourself. Your will is engaged. And then your guide can, can give you feedback which is not based on, no, don't do that, but, you know, there's danger here or it's better that way, but you're still engaging your will. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge distinction that I feel I'm not probably under, like explaining very well, but, no, I think it's cool. yeah. The, the whole thing that Mary said, you're in a crossroads, you say to God, please tell me where to go. And if God created a system that you have to activate your own will, when you're going, please tell me where to go, God, how can God answer that question? Because to answer that question, God would have to break her own gift to you by telling you where to go. Do you understand? The gift of free will is a gift God's given you, and so God would have to to break that gift and tell you where to go. In other words, you'd no longer have your own will to decide where to go. Now, God can't do that. God won't do that. And any spirit who steps in and, and does it is certainly not harmonious with God. They're out of harmony with God. Yeah. We have the mic back there, thanks, Arthur. Just, Just right, in the right back in the corner. Okay, bit nervous. That's okay. Lots of anxiety. Um, your free will is pretty heavily influenced, I feel, in your day-to-day -day life by... Your circumstances, your family, your work situation, society. There's so many things that influence free will, I feel, personally. Because well, if you um, really follow your desires, you probably wouldn't do half the things that you do every day. So how do you fit that into your life? Well, you don't fit it into your life. What you do is you address the emotional reasons why you abdicate your will to society, to family, to friends, to work, and you stop doing that in your life. That's what you need to do. So, so this, is, this is how we learn about free will. You see, when we, when we come into the world, we, we often are so... Uh, the world, the environment we're coming into is so controlled that we automatically learn to abdicate our will. But as we grow, we need to stop abdicating our will and deal with the emotional reason why we have abdicated our will in our past. So every time you abdicate your will to your family, you are out of harmony with what God desired for you to do. Every time you abdicate your will to your friends, you are out of harmony with what God desired you to do. Every time you abdicate your will to society, you are out of harmony with what, what God desired for you to do. What we need to do is we need to see that and then look at the emotional reason inside, which is always fear, that caused us to do it. And we need to finish up releasing these fears so that we don't do it anymore. So, so in the example you give, you say that you feel that we don't really have as much free will as we should have. Mm -hmm. Is that not true? Yeah, that's true. And, and it, that is very true. We, we, we don't exercise our free will as much as we should. We have it because we have we're it. using it to please everyone else. So we're, doing, we're using our will. It's just that we're using it against what we desire. And for other people, we're using it to please them. So in other words, we are conforming our will to other people. So unfortunately, most of us are living in a cult. It's the cult of 
family, yes. it's the cult society, of family, the cult career. of society, <laughs> the cult of culture, the cult of religion, the cult of all these different cults. We're living in them constantly because we're refusing to actually address the fear we have inside of us as to if we do something different to that, how we'll be looked upon, how we'll be attacked, how we'll be controlled, how we'll be viewed or treated, how we'll be judged. And we're so afraid of all of those things, attack, judgment, and so forth. We're so afraid of them that we automatically now learn to abdicate our will and give it to the people who we feel have the power to judge us. Give it to the people who we feel have the power to attack us, and so forth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is challenge that. And if we all challenge that, and everybody in a society challenged that, then the society would be severely challenged for a period of time. And then after that, everyone would start recognising, you're allowed to do what you want. I'm allowed to do what I want, as long as what we both want is harmonious with love. So, so you can do anything you want, as long as it's harmonious with love, and the society would accept what you're doing. You can do other things that are out of harmony with love, and the society will attempt to correct you in some way. But it won't be based on what the society fears, it'll be based on love. And that's the difference. And if we can do that, and have the courage to do that in our day-to-day -day life, it needs a few people to start the process, right? If we have the courage to do that, then other people will look at it and go, oh, they're doing that. Well, I didn't realise you could do that. I might do that too. And then more people would go, oh, wow, isn't this amazing? They're doing that. I'm not doing that, but I could do that. <laughs> And at the moment, the majority of us don't even feel we can do it because, because society or our religion or our family or our friends or whatever control us so much and we abdicate our own free will to allow this control and, and we're so afraid of disappointing any of them that we don't actually engage our will completely. And that's what I feel is a very sad part of human society. But as you go through the spirit world, you learn to embrace your will and you learn to embrace it without what anybody else thinks of you so you get to a point in the spirit world if you don't do it before on earth where you will in fact be doing things that all of your family disagrees with you doing and you'll still go ahead and do with it mm. you'll still do it because you've now engaged your will fully yeah does that make sense yeah. very good question mm -hmm. very good question yeah and, and the danger when we talk about spirits is that spirits love people who abdicate their will. Because that means a spirit, I mean a spirit who's in a dark place, a spirit who's in a dark place can, then can use you to get what they want from you. And this is how many people become drunkards. It's how many people become drug addicts. It's how many pe people you know, die from all sorts of diseases because of different addictions all because they, it began with abdicating their will, yeah. Yeah. giving their will up. Yeah. Yeah. The cult of family <laughs> is the strongest force that causes us to give up our will. That is one of the strongest forces on the planet for giving up your will. More, much more strong than religion or politics or any other form of of you know, forcing control. a person or control. The cult of family causes... It's with us from the moment we're conceived and by the time we're three or four years of age, we accept it as if this is what we have to do. We have no choice. And we do have still choice. It's just that we don't believe we have choice anymore. That's the difference. Mm 